Well, it has been one thing after the other with this spare part built Franken transmission. Uh, you saw that the overdrive band, the peg for it, which I'm trying to think which side, well, I can't see it anyhow. Uh, the pin for the, the anchor pin for that had, uh, was was not pushed in all the way so the band was slipping off and shame on me for not noticing that when i was putting it together um recently it has gotten real crazy with its shifting and honestly not shifting uh at all I seem to remember you know maybe that governor was a little loose on there so anyhow i'm taking off the governor uh, take it off this tail housing right now so I can take a look at the governor and see what's going on with it. Governor is moving around the shaft, so. Um, might have been, yeah, it is definitely loose, so. Um, we'll pull a snap ring off and pull that out. Um, and then there's a little trick where you can shim up behind the little ball bearing that's that's in there so i mean it could be losing pressure there it just seems kind of crazy the way it went from shifting perfectly to just really totally <laughs> not at all um i mean just for it to get into first gear i mean second gear you know it was having to go like 5,000 rpm and it would finally and finally shift. Yeah, I'm having to hand hold this so I can't show the steps as I do them. I went ahead and pulled the actual valve end of the governor um, off. It's just easier for me to get my hand around and, and give this, you know, some wiggle jiggle uh, action. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead that bearing is right up there that little check ball ball bearing so have a magnet handy um so you can uh catch it um i actually just put it in neutral so i could turn it and have it uh at the bottom but i'm going to try to pull it out before it before it rolls and a quick inspection on the the actual valves in the governor there they did seem to be you know they usually just fall right out and uh it didn't seem like it might be stuck so uh, we might that this might be our problem after all between this being loose and um possible stuck valves but i'm gonna wait till i get everything out to give it a good look okay here is the governor i just took out of the truck and see here there is some visible i'm not sure how good it shows up but there's like this hammered little pattern in there um i mean it looks like a bunch of little tiny little bricks hammered hammered in there um you know and you can feel there is there is a different you can it you can feel that there and the little area where the little ball bearing um check ball it holds it in place it's got a lot of visible wear now normally this see this usually let's look at something here here's a little filter screen that i did replace and it's it's clean. I'm gonna put that in there just so it doesn't get away. Um, but generally, yeah, that is not moving all that easy. An 82 casting that they used all the way up until 89 uh because i'm going to show you here this 81 he 1980 that is actually e0 so that is 1980 uh, 
Let's open this up and see what's going on. Honestly, I think I'm going to put... This is the one... This uh, governor here is actually the one that was on the tail shaft of the Franken transmission that's, that's in there. So I got a feeling that... Um, yeah, see, these, that should actually just kind of, like, fall right out of there. So this thing is probably, it would be reasonable to think that this is indeed a problem. Yeah, you know what? Let me stop the camera for a minute and wipe my hands. I'm going to open up this other one. All right, so I believe you might be on to something here. I had to actually get in here and pry this stuff loose. These, um, all these little weights and spool valves, or they're kind of both, they're weights and spool valves. That's how it works as a, as a centrifugal governor. Um, usually this stuff just falls right out of there and I had to convince it to come out. So let's, yeah, in fact, right there, it, that hangs up. Um, so just for giggles and grins, let's take a look at this. This one that was originally on the tail shaft that is actually in the truck right now Oops. in fact let me, I'm sitting here on my front porch it's just it's nice but threatening threatening rain so let's see how easily that moves around it's having a little bit of problem as well but not as much so i'm gonna soak i'm actually gonna put this one back in i'm just gonna clean this one up now let's take a look inside of this Yeah, it's a little wear pattern from where it rides on that ball bearing is much smaller. And inside here, it almost looks like a crack at first. Um, this in here is nice and even all the way around. It's not chattered up. So that valve has been like really getting hammered. Uh, so I'm going to clean this one, and then the other little trick I might do is take an O-ring and cut a little cut a little section out of an O-ring and stick it up on the back side of where the little ball bearing goes into the hole in the tail shaft, and that helps push it out, which pulls it tighter, pulls these two holes here tighter against against the shaft. So yeah, I'm thinking I was. Two things going on, losing a lot of pressure uh, from that chattering uh, and that wiggle that it that it had, and the fact that the uh, you know the valves in this one were just not moving. Um, I mean, even this one, I had to give it a little bit of a hand, but you know, then they came they came loose. So I'm clean that up, and then we'll put it all back in the truck. Okay, so got. You can hear that. You can see that. We've got to make sure I don't lose my little screen. All right, that's how that should work. That spool valve should move back and forth nice and easy. It should rattle around. Like I said, usually when you take these things apart, the stuff just all falls out the bottom. Um, this one here, this is the one I just took out of there. I mean, it, I've been monkeying with it, so... Yeah, it is starting to move, but man, it does not come up to the top nice and free and easy. 
can see it. Uh, make sure I don't lose my screen. <laughs> that should just pop right up there, you know, which is opening and closing these chambers. And this one just does not do that. So, um, all right, I feel good about that. And again, now with this cleaned up a little bit, I mean, I can see that there is a little bit of wear in there, um, but not like, not like this other one that's just, you know, kind of hammered in there. So we'll see how this fits uh, when I put it on the tail shaft, if need be, and I need to put a little cut section of O-ring up behind the uh, that check ball bearing. Um, you know, then I'll show you that. Um, I might show you that anyhow. Um, but let me uh, let me see how this all goes together and fits before the rain gets here. And something very important, I pointed this out in the actual transmission build video. See these two holes? These go towards the front of the truck, towards the transmission, towards the radiator, uh, however you want to uh, want to look at it. These go towards the front, and equally, when you put it together, you've got one hole here, and then you've got this chamber right there well those line up like this all right so that goes towards the front so this is the side looking from the back that you should see you shouldn't see this which would have the that plate on it so you shouldn't see that if you put it on there the right way and if you put this on there the right because you can put it on wrong so just make sure yeah, I'm going to show you this little trick right here about the taking an O-ring. Get this where it'll focus. So take an O-ring and just cut a little, little section out of it. And then in your output shaft... where your ball bearing goes. You put that little guy in there and then Well, it's not as easy. <laughs> it's easier to do when this is held in the transmission. Uh, but anyhow, you get the idea. Um, that little rubber is going to be squishing up against it. You can see in there, you can see the green little piece of O-ring that's in there. You kind of see again, in real life, <laughs> this shaft is held in place and <laughs> you would, you just, it, it will tap over. It will. You would tap this with a you know brass hammer or whatever, uh, you know tapping it that way, and you know once it starts to squish and go down, it'll go down. And what that'll do is it puts more pressure on on it this way to uh, pull it tight up against those uh, passages. So the pressure doesn't get lost. Uh, I'm gonna go under there and see if it'll work without the uh, without it, and then if so, I will put it in. All right, there it is. As you can see, it is very loosey goosey. So this is the original one that would have been on this shaft. I just cleaned it up, and so I'm gonna pull slide this back off and. Uh, put that little section of a little piece of green cut o-ring in there and then push it all back together all right got the little 
hockey puck of O-ring underneath the ball. And now it, except for a little bit of play, which you're gonna need, I mean, you have to have some. Um, I can see it with my eyes, but I can't really see it with the with the camera. Let's see. There. Yeah, the shaft the shaft moves with the governor. Now, where before uh, the governor moved, then the shaft moved. So before the rain comes, let me go ahead and get all this together and maybe get a test drive in. Um, the other thing I just wanted to add in is these governors on the Ford is like the, um, modulator valve on a GM, like a turbo 350, turbo 400, whatever. And that's why the darn thing, if this thing isn't letting fluid go through the right passages, um, it's not going to shift. So, um, you know that's that's why it'll go into first it'll go into reverse and move with no problem but you know like a gm if you had the vacuum line off the modulator valve it's gonna it's gonna go to you know six thousand rpm and it ain't gonna shift so uh that's what this does